In der letzten Leserumfrage von Hardwarelux haben wir herausgefunden, dass 27% der Hardwarelux-Leser demnächst einen NAS kaufen wollen. Na gut, dann schauen wir doch mal, was es Neues bei QNAP gibt. Yeah, hi Jason. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, yeah, you, we have a lot of new products here on the QNAP booth, and you're going to introduce us the first two. Yes, uh, yeah. hi everyone, uh, I'm Jason. So today I'm going to introduce the first uh, AMD Ryzen based uh, NAS, which is uh, the TS1277. And uh, this 77 series has a 6 bay, 8 bay, and 12 bay configuration. And they are available with uh, AMD Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 5. Uh, all the way from quad core, six core, and eight core processors, mm -hmm. and the memory is up to uh, DDR4 of 64 gigabyte memory, and uh, the multi core processor allows it a very good uh, uh, usage for the virtual machine based applications. So you can allows you to consolidate so many many application servers into just single one single NAS box. And besides, it also offers uh, two built-in uh, USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit uh, ports. Mm -hmm. So we included uh, one Type A and the one Type C ports for mm -hmm. you to connect to uh, ultra high-speed uh, external devices for read and write. Yeah. And besides, it also offers uh, three PCIe slots, so you can put in, uh, for example, 10 gig, 40 gig, and uh, even a graphics card to do some multimedia applications. Mm -hmm. So we will allow it to, for example, once you put in a compatible AMD or NVIDIA graphics card, you can use it for QTS, for example, HDMI output, or for the transcoding applications. Furthermore, you can use the GPU pass-through capability to let the virtual machines mm -hmm. enjoy the graphics power. Yeah. Yeah, so that concludes the TS77 series. Yeah. Perfect, uh, very powerful uh, now. The second one that you wanted to introduce has Thunderbolt, I yeah, think. Yeah, we have also a brand new Thunderbolt 3 device here, which is a TS453 BT3. It is a 4-bay NAS and uh, comes with an Intel standalone quad-core processor. And uh, on, the, on the front, we included two Thunderbolt 3 ports, so users can uh, connect it to maximum two PC or Max to do a high-speed video editing, up to 600 megabytes per second. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides, the Thunderbolt 3 also double as a USB 3.1 Gen 2. So you can also connect it to a USB device as well. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that will be also available uh, maybe later in August. OK, yeah. perfect. Yeah, thanks for introducing us th those two. I think David is next. Yeah, perfect. David, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you have uh, more products uh, for introducing. Uh, yes, yeah. today I think I'm going to introduce um, QNAP Thunderbolt NAS. Yeah. We have mm. launched the Thunderbolt NAS solution, I think, around two years ago. Mm. And this year, we launched the Thunderbolt 3 NAS, mm -hmm. the model name is TVS1282 T3. Mm -hmm. In this NAS, we equip with the Intel 7th uh, generation processor, mm -hmm. KP Lake processor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the more exciting part is it has four Thunderbolt 3 ports mm -hmm. and dual 10 gigabit Ethernet. Mm -hmm. So you can have more and more um, Macs and Windows connect concurrently, mm -hmm. and they can share the contents here, and they, uh, they can also transfer all the data to the 10 gigabit network. Okay. And yep. another uh, very good solution is TVS A82 BRT3. Mm -hmm. Is this one? Yep. Ah, that one, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it is Thunderbolt 3 mm -hmm. with the KB Lake processor as well. Yep. And mm -hmm. a cool thing is there is a, a Blu-ray DVD. Okay. So you can read, uh, read the data, pick up the data to the hard drive. Okay. You can also uh, leverage a third-party solution to back up your data from the NAS to the mm -hmm. DVD. Mm -hmm. For example, you can connect your Mac via the Thunderbolt 3 ports. You can do some video editing stuff mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and burn the content into a Blu-ray DVD. Mm -hmm. So it's a cool uh, product for, our, uh, for the Thunderbolt 3. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, perfect. Yes. And the third one is 1682. I, I call okay. yeah that yeah. one. I call that is a monster yeah. for, for me mm -hmm. because the processor is, is very very powerful. It's Intel uh, Xeon processor. Mm -hmm. Normally you can see only Xeon processors mm -hmm. in the Rec models, but why we build this one? 
because uh, not everybody want to put the NAS in their server room. Some would put the NAS just next to their desk, but they need a very, very powerful NAS. So we built up this one. You have this one, uh, a tower model with Xeon processor, and it's very, very quiet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like a Rayquaz NAS, mm -hmm. and it has 16 bay, include 12 3.5 inch uh, hard drive base, mm -hmm. or 2.5 inch, especially for the SSD, and building M.2, 6 M.2 port. Yep. So you can do something like uh, SSD uh, rewrite cache. You can also leverage the QNAP, uh, QTS software function like auto tiering. Do the to auto tiering function with uh, no matter 2.5 inch SSDs and M.2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot for introducing those two products. And I think Hans is next now. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Nice to meet you, Hans. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, today I'm going to introduce the new product, which is different from the original NAS. Yeah. We call that the Alphabot. Mm -hmm. You can see there. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. The difference we put Alphabot is we call that a uh, assistant robot. Why? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, because for now that in our family that we all of us already enjoy the benefit mm -hmm. of uh, messenger. That they are convenient for us, but maybe not true for our family members, especially yeah. for our kids or for our grandparents. Mm -hmm. With the alphabet that we can establish a call on our phone, mm -hmm. and then the alphabet can answer the call automatically. So whichever means that your family member does not have to learn how to use it, but mm -hmm. they just need to talk. Okay. We also support the face tracking and other features. Mm -hmm. They don't even need to fit Alphabot. Instead, Alphabot fits yeah. us. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Of course, we are techies, but not everybody is a techie. True. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So later, maybe we can do a demonstration on that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Yeah, Sam. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, you are having a Thunderbolt three demonstration yes. behind us. Yeah. So what are you showing here? Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. And hello everyone, I'm Sam, the product manager of QNAP SMB department. And today I'm going to introduce our new Thunderbolt 3 NAS, TVS 1282T3. Mm -hmm. It offers uh, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, 210 gigabyte network, and uh, four gigabyte network. So uh, it's all designed for the small office user or Soho teams. Not, not too big, but provide an excellent performance mm -hmm. for video editing solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can see the, our amazing Thunderbolt performance here. All right. So you transfer the Blu-ray movie in mm -hmm. less than 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, besides the Thunderbolt 3, we also provide the full bandwidth of Tanky. Okay. You can see here is a local driver, mm -hmm. and here is a, a shared storage. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, that's a 10 gigabit. Yes. 10 gigabyte file. Yes. Okay. And the speed is up to 600 megabyte per yes. second. Around six Pretty to one giga per second. Yeah. Pretty impressive over 10 giga uh, over yeah 10 gigabit Ethernet. Yeah. Okay, so with this performance, uh, the production teams, if they only have four to six editors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they can direct connect uh, via the Thunderbolt or mm -hmm. Tankiga network. Mm -hmm. or also, you, they can combine the Tanky switch to expand the mm -hmm. network for more mm -hmm. editors mm -hmm. or to access their backup server, archive server, media center, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like that. So for the Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, is compatible with Adobe Premiere, mm -hmm. Final Cut Pro, or uh, Blackmagic Resolve, mm -hmm. also Avid, so more and more uh, editor software to compare. compatible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty cool demonstration. I think some of the video editing guys will, will, will definitely love it. Yes. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks for showing it. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're now standing next to the enterprise section, and I have Kevin here. Yes. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And you're going to show us some of the yeah really big NAS. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the, the Rekman model here, you will mm -hmm. see the it's basically our QNAP design for the story center. Mm -hmm. So those model, uh, you will see the for more we are designed for the. IT guys were using this kind of enterprise model. So if we are talking about the enterprise model, we were talking about the data security and data, how mm -hmm. we can make sure the data stored in our storage mm -hmm. is safe and secure. Mm -hmm. So the model in here, you will see that 
there is basically a dual control model. We decide for the uh, hardware redundancy and the network, network fail redundancy. So mm -hmm. each controller, we build in, build in four port as a P plus interface for the data transmission and the two port as T uh, interface for the both for the data transmission. So totally for each controller, we will have six port uh, data transmission, 10 gig, six 10 gig port for data transmission. And okay. uh, this is for the, the big data transfer in the enterprise purpose. But if we are talking about enterprise storage, then we will we may need to talk about how we can protect the data. So each controller we conduct the MB RAN into each controller, which means one if the power the, the rig mount model DS640 DC here encounter an unexpected power loss, then we can make sure the data will keep the integrity because one if the, the, the power was encountered unexpected power loss, the MBRN will be triggered and we will provide the power to make sure the data stored in our, our controller was keep the, keep the data to refresh. And mm -hmm. next time when the power will recover, then we will recover the data and roll back all the data to the RAN disk. Mm -hmm. Then we can make sure the data mm -hmm. is go back to the previous status. So this is one of the data protection mechanism for the, our mm -hmm. dual control model. Okay. And then the other thing is, we, if we are talking about the, the enterprise storage, then we will talk about how we can do the backup and the, how we can backup the data inside our enterprise storage. So here you will see that the, mm -hmm. the enterprise storage we provide is brand new operating system we call the QES, QNAP Enterprise Storage System. We provide near limitless snapshot to protect our data. And we can also achieve the remote replication, which means one if a, a primary site of the data center encounter a, a disaster, some of the disaster happen, then we, will, we can we can easy to should retrieve the data from the re recovery side. So the primary side and the recovery side is can easy to create a job to synchronize all the data okay. in between each size. Yep. So this is basically we define for the one data. That one data means the data we every day, every day we access it. So if we will talk about the enterprise storage, we we may have two different topics. One is one data we design for the for the cold storage purpose. And the other thing is the core data. Core data is, means the data you want to keep uh, for a very long time. So if we are talking about the one core data uh, stores, uh, this kind of task, in the past we may use the LTO, this kind of media to, to store our data. But one if the problem for the LTO is for every 10 years, you need to migrate your data, uh, for your L LTO tab to one, from one tab to another tab. It, it will have a lot of extra effort for, the, for those IT guys. So now we integrate with Panasonic Blu-ray, this kind of storage system. Mm -hmm. And our QNAP was deal with the fully integrated with Panasonic to, to, to manage all the uh, core data management. So which means, one if the customer write data, would like to write data into the Blu-ray system, our QNAP will automatically uh, let you know how uh, you can uh, archive your data into the Blu-ray system and in the, for, for a long time in the future. If you would like to retrieve the data, then you can retrieve from our QTA system instead to, to, to search our to search the Panasonic Blu-ray system. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and another thing I would like to highlight for here is in the in the past, in the past, LTO, LTO many need to migrate data for every 10 years. But this mm -hmm. one, this one we call the magazine. Magazine, each magazine we contain 12 Blu-ray discs. And thanks for the, te the technology in improvement, for the material and technology improvement. Each magazine, we contain 12 Blu-ray disks, and each disk we can keep over 50 years to 100 years, which means the user do not need to migrate the data every 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, and it is easy to keep the, the, the magazine. So this is one of the difference between the freeze freeze this kind of storage and the traditional mm -hmm. uh, LTO storage, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's what we are talking about uh, the code data integrated. Mm -hmm. So yeah, perfect. Yeah, let's go over. So per, I'll mention the Blu-ray DA archives is what we integrate with the Panasonic. So uh, here I would like to show the integrate user, in, user interface here with our QTS, the DA archive man, DA manager in our QTS QPK mm -hmm. application. So in the if we are talking about the code data management, you we most of our customers will show us they encounter, they encounter one of the big problems. They are it's hard to manage their code data. For example, if you store your data in a tab in an LTO tab, for a long distance uh, future, if you would like to retrieve your data, it's hard to understand where is your data put what kind of LTO LTO tab. So in the in our 
DA archive, DA manager, we can identify the data you store in a specific magazine because each magazine we can identify as an RFID. Mm -hmm. So in the future, if you would like to put your data into the DA, manager, DA archive storage, then we can help you to identify the file is stored in a specific magazine mm -hmm. and it's easy to retrieve it because all the data will rake in will record in our DA manager. And then here you are you you can see that. The UI you can see that we can monitor the data, the, the space you can you you still can you you can use and you already used that and the, the cache is means the HDD cache mm -hmm. for our QTS hard hard drive cache because the Blu-ray and the, the right IO speed of the Blu-ray is more slower than the hard drive mm -hmm. IO sp status speed. So so the cache we can in dramatically improve our customer. Mm -hmm. Just put the your drive, the the, mm -hmm. the data you want to archive into into the storage through our cache, then the remain task is our QNAP job. Mm -hmm. And then you can easily to manage manage how many how many magazines you have. So mm -hmm. all the magazine status will be rig uh, in our DA manager. So this is the basic uh, integration with our customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Ripple, hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. You have another cool demo here next to us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ripple, product manager at QNET. And I'm very excited to introduce you our latest SMB function, Red 15 and 16, and mm -hmm. ISO over our DNA. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, uh, it's really important for QNET to introduce uh, enterprise function into SMB mm -hmm. because we know small and middle sized business is the core market of our company. So we introduced Red 15 and 16 because right now, as you can see, we provide it now with higher capacity mm -hmm. and we, we wish that our customer have, have better red performance, performance and protection with our QNET NAS. So first of all, let's see the storage manager. You can see that we have the Red 16 here. You can see we're combining two Red 6 group into a Red 16. So to provide a better protection, we are QNAN us with a higher capacity. And secondly, we also introduced another very important feature called uh, ISER. ISCASI is stand for our DNA. This function will provide a performance boost for our QNAN us along with uh, VMware ESLI. So this UI set showing that our uh, ISO of our RDNA is already available on 4.3.3. And instead of UI, we're also showing a real live demo, which we, is also an honor for us to introduce uh, Taiwan's country manager, Mr. Hu, to introduce ISO to us. Yeah. Hello, Dennis. Hello, hi, Kissin. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, as you can see, I think QNAP, this product, uh, you know, provide an outstanding you know, example of how iSCSI is running over the RDNA. So as you can see, the left-hand side is running on this uh, model 1685, and right-hand side is running the iSCSI, mm -hmm. and, and also on this one. So both of the... Uh, Performance, as you can see, this one is running only in the ice classic without the RDMI. And this one is based on Metalox, the Connect 3 Pro cars with the RDMA technology. So as you can see, the performance is much, much better, more than 80% higher performance. Yep. So it proves that uh, ice classic, the ICER, ice classic running over RDMA really can improve the throughput as well as uh, lower the uh, load latency mm -hmm. to improve all the hard disk drivers uh, performance based on the RDMA. Thank you very yeah, much. Perfect. Yeah, thanks a lot for introducing us everything. Thanks a lot to your team as yeah. well. Thank you. uh, we had a lot of information here on the QNAP booth and I hope you liked it. Goodbye to Germany. Goodbye.